Hello and welcome everybody. In this video we have an old Waffham pocket watch. A friend found this pocket watch going through some family belongings. It's missing the crystal. The dial's a little grungy, but these enamel dials usually clean up pretty well. Check out the reflection in that case. Let's see if we can get a little tick out of this. A little shake. There we go. It's a little tick. That's encouraging. Will it wind? It feels fully wound. Let's see if we can get the set. Well, the hand setting feels okay. As I think I mentioned, this is a Watham movement. The way it worked is you would buy your watch movement and there would be a variety of cases that you would choose when you bought the watch. The serial number dates this to 1902. It is a zero sized movement, seven jewels. And this is in a hunter style case. So that's why it, the crown and stem are at the three o'clock position. Looks like the minute hand has been bent. It's touching the dial, likely because of that missing crystal. Let's take a look at the movement here. Actually here on the inside of the case, there's a stamp here that indicates that it's gold filled. We won't be polishing this case. We'll just sort of buff off the fingerprints. And we'll continue inside here and let's see if our balance will oscillate. Okay, well, that's something that's it's not wobbling, but it definitely looked a little sticky. Well, without further delay, let's go ahead and uh, work on disassembling this so that we can uh, get it apart and cleaned. Pry these hands up gently with these levers. Plastic just is a little precaution to protect the dial. And we'll take a measurement for our replacement crystal. So the movement comes out the front, but first we need to remove these case screws that prevent it from falling out the front. Need to pull the stem. And now I remember I've forgotten to remove the bezel. So we'll snap that off with the case knife. And now we can slide the movement out. These pocket watches tend to have three dial feet screws that you need to loosen. That will allow the dial to be lifted from the movement. And this is not requiring very much pressure at all, so it's going to lift off pretty easily. And we'll get this off into a little safe place. The hour wheel and the minute wheel come off pretty easily. Now we'll pop off the cannon pinion with the cannon pinion removal tool and we'll flip it back over to the trainer wheel side. We'll, wow, that's not tight. We'll work on removing the, uh, the balance cock. It's, uh, the balance is considered to be the most delicate part of the watch because it has that uh, very fragile coiled hairspring. I want to just gently lift this up. And it's being a little stubborn. It's sticking, so I'm going to lower it back down, and then I'm going to lift up on the the balance wheel here to unstick it, because you don't want to stretch that hairspring. So that should be loose enough. I can pull it up out of the way. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is fully wound, but um, oddly enough, I've been fiddling around with this for a while now, and I cannot get the power released from the mainspring, even when I'm holding the click, uh, it's just not releasing. So I'm going to do something unorthodox. I'm going to recase it. That way I can hold the stem and crown as I remove the pallet fork. And uh, this will help. This will keep the power from releasing. That was a little clumsy, but luckily the pallet is stuck to the pallet cock. So uh, that helped minimize some risk there. Progressing on, go ahead and loosen the screws on this bridge. I'm still a little curious how we're going to deal with the uh, mainspring or the power wound up in that mainspring, but we'll figure that out to when we get there. Huh. 
So this is loose, but it's strangely fussy. Just does not want to come off. So there must be a wheel pivot really gummed up. So rather than, than keep pulling this, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and move to the other bridge and see if that will help us um, get this off without doing any damage. There it is. Wow, that escape wheel is practically glued on there. I'm surprised we got any tick at all earlier. Okay, I'm, I'm noticing something really weird here. There's tension from the spring still. So this thing can go flying at any minute. So I'm going to have to take the rest of this apart while holding the barrel in place. So, so center wheel. Oh, it's really hard to get a grip on this. A third wheel. Our fourth wheel. Now I've got to figure out how to get this barrel. I don't know if I should let it go or try and hold it in place. I'm, I'm going to try and let it actually unwind. I don't know if this was part of the issue why it wouldn't run, but I've never encountered anything like this before, but it, it, there was a lot of power in here. This is, I'm, I feel like this thing is just going to fly off here at any minute. Man, that thing was wound tight. Wow, I can't believe it just didn't um, release all that power when I took the pallet fork out. Usually uh, when, the, when you take the pallet fork out, the wheels will just spin very, very quickly. You do run a risk of damage with that power jolting through the train of wheels. Okay. I think that's it. I think we are powered down. Wow. So that's our barrel. And that's the click which allows the barrel to ratchet to hold the power. Okay, so this is another little weird discovery. So usually you have to pry the cap off the barrel to expose the mainspring. If you can see here, the cap is loose and the mainspring is actually larger than the barrel. Now, I don't know what to think of this. <laughs> you know? um, did someone try and replace the mainspring with the wrong size? Yeah, look at that. It definitely protrudes beyond the barrel. The cap really doesn't have much of a lip for it to snap over. So I don't know. It's just like just a different kind of assembly, something that I'm not used to. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it back together as it is. The directive here was to make as few changes as possible. So we're going to get it back together with this mainspring and this barrel and see what happens. So we'll proceed in the disassembly here. We'll remove this cover, which goes over the bit of, um, well, it handles the setting and winding position of the stem. It's an interesting shaped spring there. Put some Rodico down to keep that from flying off as I pull up and that wasn't too bad. This is definitely not the usual shape for these, but I'm going to make sure that it's as symmetrical it appears at first glance to make sure we get that back on properly during the reassembly.
The stem will actually just lift off because there's a pin that runs through it. You can see the head of it there at that squared off portion of the main plate. Click. Again, the click is what um, allows that barrel to ratchet to wind up the spring. Interesting spring for the click. These old pocket watches, uh, often as similar as they are, they often have little differences that are really neat. I'm going to put the screw back so I keep track of it. Now I'm going to loosen the two screws on the crown wheel. There are two screws here because if you had one screw, it could potentially loosen itself as it turns. Nowadays, we more often see a reverse threaded screw. I'll lift this off with some Rodica. setting wheel here. Get these screws back into place. It's really a good practice to help uh, keep track of things. I'm trying to get better about that. You can usually figure it out just going back over your footage or your photos, but sometimes And the stem's falling out, which is funny, considering how finicky it is to get in. I'm going to tighten up these dowel feet screws. There are three of them. I do find they tend to back out in the ultrasonic cleaner. I use a four-step process in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, that's water-free. Flip this back over to the train of wheel side to get that little pin that slides inside the uh, stem there. It helps secure it to the movement. There's a little, kind of like a little loop that it goes under. It's kind of a crude part. I don't know if this is the original part or something that's been um, engineered <laughs> for a replacement part. We'll get these parts into our four-step ultrasonic cleaning process. Get them dry and we'll prepare for reassembly. The big test being if that strange barrel and mainspring setup will work or not. And through the magic of editing, we are now ready to reassemble the movement. I don't know if I mentioned earlier that this is a Watham movement. It's a seven jewel movement, so it's not the highest end, but um, there were encouraging signs that it will run. I'm gonna start with lubricating this little post and getting it onto the movement to try and manipulate the um, stem onto. And we're putting a, not an oil, but a, a watch appropriate grease onto the stem here and slide our pinions over the stem. And basically putting this grease wherever there's metal to metal contact. Now, to be honest, there might be a better way to do this, but I've just found I've had to kind of shimmy and adjust to get this placed. You may remember that that post has, uh, it was kind of cut, so it has a flat side, so that goes down onto the surface of the movement. And you can't, pr can't push it all the way up bec uh, because the stem won't slide over, so it has to kind of be pulled back a little bit. So I just kind of um, manipulated this over without forcing anything to get this stem assembly finally in place. Like I said, given that this thing just fell out when I disassembled it, I can't help but think that there's a more sophisticated way. So maybe you know. Get our pinion back here. Gently. 
don't want to bend that shaft or that little post just slightly getting that into place there we go I don't have a technical service guide for this movement, so I'm just kind of relying on experience and a little common sense on where there's contact for where to lubricate these parts. Just checking this clutch to make sure uh, it feels okay. So I mentioned that this is a zero size movement and it's small for a pocket watch, but it's, uh, it's kind of uh, maybe contemporary size for modern day wristwatches. Let's hold this spring down with some wood while I get it in place. Don't fly off, please. Feels okay. Is it? Yep. I think we're good to go. Now we can get this little cover screwed down on here. Just a little test. Now we can get our click spring and click onto the movement. Honestly, I don't know how much benefit there was in actually removing the click and click spring on this movement, but um, it was easy enough. So I suppose there's not much harm and only benefit to get it cleaned. That feels all right. Sometimes you'll see me reverse the screw just a little bit to make sure it's seated before I tighten. And a little lubrication here where the barrel goes in. And I see a little bit of wear in that area. So I'll often put a little lubrication where I see some wear. Our escape wheel. Make sure it's down in the pivot. Now our fourth wheel. And a third wheel. Get it in the pivot. Now we'll see if we can get this bridge on without much fuss. Try and get it lined up as best I can. A little gentle nudge here and there. You can see this move it dance around a little bit as I give it a little tap. Sometimes that really just makes it drop right into place and I think we're close. So we'll go ahead and get some screws in here partially and with a little luck we can move on to the other bridge. And that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubrication on these pivots. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to put this back together with the parts in the arrangement that it came and we'll see if it works. Just a little lubrication here on the mainspring. Mainspring looked pretty good, actually. Practically unused, it seemed. So maybe it was replaced. I don't know. 
a little bit of oil here on the top where the arbor goes through. Uh, the usual arrangement, this arbor goes inside the barrel and that cap snaps over it. That's not how this fits together. It's just really different. I don't know, maybe it's a, it was a low cost option or a easier way to assemble. Try and get our center wheel in. And now I'm realizing I've made a mistake. <laughs> I've gone the wrong order. So I'm going to have to undo um, what I just did getting this, this bridge on. So let's just go ahead and... Um, lift this slightly out of the way see if we can get our center wheel in without disrupting too much it's a little bit embarrassing of a mistake but it, uh, it's not the most embarrassing mistake i've made and i'm sure i'll make more but we don't have to back up too far to get things back on track We've got our center wheel set and we'll try and get this bridge back in place. A little tap here to see if we can get it to dance into position. And of course, it's not going back on as easily as the first time. Just nudge these wheels a little bit. I think we're close, so I'm going to tighten it down. And here we go. Oh, the, there it went. Did you see that? There we go. Now we can tighten these screws the rest of the way down. Now we can get this other bridge on. I do love the decoration on these old pocket watches. You know, push on the barrel to See that it's engaging those wheels and we look good. Tighten this bridge down. I really enjoy the decoration on these old pocket watch movements. If you look really closely, you can just see how human and organic the work is. A little lubrication there on the center wheel on the rest of these pivots here. Flip this over to the dial side. We'll loosen this screw that we put here to keep from losing. And we'll lubricate that post. And we'll also lubricate that raised rail that, um, that wheel glides over. It's clearly made contacts over the years. So we'll go ahead and lubricate it. Put a little oil here on this rail where this wheel goes. Put a little oil on the underside of this wheel. It's 
see if we can nudge this in without disrupting the oil too much. If I do, then I have to start over. A little oil here on the inside where that centerpiece goes on. Let's see if I can drop that cover in over the screw holes. I'm going to tighten the side part way down so that it doesn't shift this plate so much that I can't get this one properly tightened. And we'll screw this one down a little more and then I'll go back and finish this one. Now we'll flip back over to the train of wheels side to get our pallet fork in. Sometimes I'll go ahead and put some oil on that um, the surface of the pallet stone that hits the escape wheel. But in this case, um, I'm gonna wait until I get it installed. Just trying to nudge that into the pivot so that when I get the cock or I guess technically this is a bridge since there are two screws in place we have less fussing to do with this just checking to see that you're in the top and bottom pivot before we get the screws in I'll get these screws started. Not really even a soft set so much, but just screw down enough so that I can check that the pallet fork uh, is actually in the pivots. And if I feel any resistance while I kick this back and forth here, then I know something's wrong. Tighten this down a little more. Now it's actually pretty close. Just checking it once more. Flicks back and forth pretty freely. So now yeah, I can show you a little better view. So no resistance. That's what you want. Now I'm going to put a little tiny little drop of oil on the surface of that stone. And we'll flick this tail back and forth to advance the escape wheel a few teeth five or six teeth at a time then we'll repeat the process a few more times until we have all the teeth lubricated on the escape wheel now comes one of my favorite parts about watchmaking and that's getting the balance installed and that was a good sign and I'll say it's uh, looking a lot better than when we started. <laughs> so I'm happy to see that balance oscillating. And uh, I didn't really have to fuss around with it very much to get the uh, pivots aligned. I like to see it oscillate while I'm tightening. That way, if it stops or even slows down while I'm tightening, uh, it's a good sign for me to slow down on the tightening, check the pivots. Now, sometimes it will stop while tightening. It's just the cock shifting around. Um, but you just got to be cautious. Now, I'll need to lubricate that stone there. It's held down by two screws, two tiny little screws. And I find on these old movements that the brass that these are screwed into are often stripped out just from well improper improper handling 
that's unfortunate. And uh, sometimes these are very difficult to get out even. Uh, there's just uh, not really enough res resistance for the threads to back the screw out. Uh, so sometimes you really have to kind of get in there with some Rodico or some clever ways to get those screws out. And uh, while the screws came out pretty easily, the jewel setting did not. So I tried a, uh, tried a variety of tweezers and screwdrivers to pry this thing out. I did finally get it. Sometimes you have to be persuasive, but don't cross the line into uh, causing damage. And after all that drama, we clean it up with a little peg wood, dip it in an alcohol bath, and we'll get our little drop of oil and get our jewel back in to the balance cock. And now we can move on to the other side. Again, we'll clean with a little bit of peg wood, clean it in some isopropyl alcohol, and when it's dry, we'll go ahead and add our oil. Again, another small drop. I personally aim for a drop that covers about 50 to 60% of the surface area. What's very important is that your drops are roughly the same size. When they're different sizes, that can affect the amplitude, depending if the movement is facing dial up or dial down. All right, we've got this set. Mercifully, this was a little easier than the other side. Again, you want to get these snug, gently snug, but it'd be really easy to over tighten and end up stripping out that brass fitting. I'm going to put some D5 inside the cannon pinion before I slide it over the center wheel post and carefully line those teeth up before you press down or else you're going to damage something. I'm going to put a little oil here on this rail where this wheel slides over. Our minute wheel and some oil there where the hour wheel goes. Line these teeth up. All right, we can dial this thing up. So now we are going to loosen those dial feet screws that we tighten to keep from losing them during the cleaning process. Before I put the dial on the movement, I want to see how well it will clean up. I've just got some distilled water here on a very soft swab. And I'm just very lightly, I'm not scrubbing here. I'm just sort of barely making contact with the dial. They're pretty um, resilient, but I, you know, I want to be extra careful. We'll blow this off. I think it looks pretty nice. We'll drop this in, line the dial feet up over the movement, and we'll tighten these feet down. Now we can get our hands on. I like to hold the hand uh, by the tip with some Rodico while I press down. I didn't have to set it here at midnight, but it just seems like a, as good a place as any. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down on the table here directly so I can get a little more force. It's a little resistant. So the minute hand, if you remember, was bent. So we'll work on straightening that out. And I got it back in the case here so I can set the hour hand to midnight so we can get these hands aligned. Again, a little Rodico with the tip of the hand. Align it and sort of soft set it typically with the first initial press and then I'll make an adjustment if needed and then I'll set it. Just checking our hands to make sure they're not colliding with one another and also alignment. We look good. So now we can 
set our seconds hand. These are a little tougher because <laughs> they're so small. Feels good. It doesn't take a lot of force to set that seconds hand. And now it's occurred to me that I should have put these case screws in earlier. But um, no harm, no foul. That's what happens when you work on these things as a hobbyist at odd hours. Just checking the hands over once again. Sometimes those hands will collide with the seconds hand, but that looks like it's set deeply enough. The dial cleaned up pretty well, I think. And after a few days, the watch has been running pretty much as expected. Um, I'm surprised given that unusual barrel and mainspring setup. But today, we have the uh, crystal we've been waiting for. So I'm going to use this press. I'm going to sort of bow that crystal inward so that we can get it into that bezel. And then we'll just snap this bezel into place over the watch case. Well, I think it looks great. And over the past few days, it's kept remarkably good time within a few seconds a day. Has a power reserve of um, a couple of days, maybe not quite full two days, but Dodger, I'm trying to talk here. You might have heard my cat meowing in the background. So anyway, he has a power reserve of a couple of days. I've even carried it around in my pocket for a day to see if it would keep running or stop running, and it's been pretty reliable. Now, this is not a daily timepiece, but it's a family keepsake and I'm glad we were able to get it running with the parts that it arrived with the only difference really being the new crystal so anyway thanks again for joining the video and uh, I hope that it was helpful it was a weird one <laughs> that barrel and spring setup but um, we're good to go until the next one take care